Over the last three years, we have seen several Chinese ride manufacturers attempt to break into the Western rides market. This Super Cup video will showcase the main players in this area, Jinma Rides, Noble Rides, and SBL. All of these manufacturers have recently shown off their products at the IAPA Expo in Orlando, with varying levels of success. Let's begin with Jinma Rides. Jinma Rides, translated to English as Golden Horse Rides, is larger than Intamin and B&M, yet many fans of the amusement industry have never heard of them. Today, Jinma Rides is one of the top three largest ride manufacturers in the world by revenue. They've built over 300 roller coasters and countless other rides. They continue to grow and over the past few years have positioned themselves to be a serious threat to Western ride manufacturers. This is all while being constantly accused of intellectual property theft. Today we'll examine the growth and the future of Jinma Rides, but first we have to look at their past, including some of their most important and interesting roller coasters. Jinma Rides was started in 1983 as one of the first Chinese ride manufacturers. They would expand slowly for the first two decades of their existence, mostly sticking to low-cost rides designed strictly for the Chinese market. In this time, they would introduce one of the most popular roller coaster models of all time, the spinning coaster. The design of this spinning coaster would become the backbone of Jinma, and still has an influence on their coaster designs today. Jinma remains the largest spinning coaster manufacturer in the world. Their first design of a spinning coaster entered a market that was rapidly expanding and looking for low-cost, thrilling rides. Today, the Jinma Spinning Coaster remains one of the most cloned coaster models ever made, with over 100 being built. Before 2007, Jinma would also introduce several flat rides, all designed as lower cost versions of the western rides they were inspired by, as well as several children's coasters and water ride models. In 2007, Jinma would become a private company, meaning it was no longer, officially anyway, owned by the Chinese government. This would mark a huge change as Jinma would now focus on dominating the Chinese ride market by innovating, copying, and constantly striving for higher quality rides. The first major coaster to come out of the new Jinma rides was the SLC. This was designed as a lower cost option for Chinese parks to get the high thrill attraction traditionally offered by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. The first versions of these rides nearly exactly copied a Vacoma version of the SLC installed at Happy Valley Shenzhen. When comparing the two rides side by side, it's easy to see where most of Jinma's ideas for this ride came from. In 2007, they would also introduce a mine train coaster model. This is notable for being one of the first large scale Chinese built coasters to allow for more than one train to operate at a time. For the next decade, Jinma Rides would focus mainly on mass-producing the models they had already created, making slight altercations through the years, as well as occasionally debuting new ideas. In late 2017 and early 2018, Jinma Rides would undergo their next phase of expansion, starting by going public, being listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. This would mark a turning point where they would shift their focus to the international market by creating higher quality rides, rides that would fit in at Western amusement parks. This is the track Jinma Rides is on today, having introduced several new models of roller coasters as well as their own design of a roller coaster train unique to their company. Here's a quick review of all the new coaster models they have introduced so far. The Super Spinning Coaster. This is an updated take on the original Jinma Spinning Coaster. This is a fairly unique ride featuring updated and modernized spinning coaster trains. Standard models of the Super Spinning Coaster also feature an inversion. When the model debuted in 2017, it was one of the first spinning coasters to go upside down. This was the first model where Jinma started to step away from blatant copies of existing rides and move towards rides that were compelling for buyers for reasons other than their low price. They also released an updated mine train coaster, now featuring up to four cross trains, a first for a coaster like this, as well as modernized track and custom ride layouts. They unveiled an updated suspended coaster, now offering new trains and track, with new standard layouts as well as the option for custom layouts. Vacoma, the ride manufacturer they originally copied to make their original suspended coasters, would actually end up following Jinma a few years later, also introducing a modernized version of their original suspended coaster, with a somewhat similar design to Jinma's new model. In 2018, they took a big step forward in creating more desirable coasters, starting with a dive coaster based on B&M's design, though their model uses slightly longer trains. Though their most stunning ride of the year was the Broken Rail Coaster. It's safe to say this coaster was inspired by an older Vacoma tilt coaster, but this ride is very different. It features both standard and customizable layouts, as well as a modern track style also used on Jinma's other new rides. The most important part of this new coaster, though, would be the new trains. 
These would be the first of Jinma's new standard sit-down trains. These trains have gone on to be fitted on several different types of Jinma coasters that we'll discuss in a moment. These trains were designed for export too, adhering to ASTM standards and using several different designs of restraints. In 2019, they would introduce a new racing powered coaster model, one of the first powered coasters released in the last 10 years. In 2021, Jinma rides would get their big break, working with Universal to provide three rides for their Beijing theme park, with one of them being a family coaster. Italian manufacturer Zamperla talks about their entire business changing after getting the opportunity to work with Disney in the early 1990s. After this opportunity, Zamperla began being taken very seriously in the industry, and their products and installations reflected that. Today, Zamperla is the largest ride manufacturer in the world. It's hard not to draw parallels between Zamperla's experience in the 90s with Disney and Jinma's experience with Universal today. In 2023, Jinma would debut an all-new flying coaster model. Using their new track inspired by B&M's design, though this track is different in several ways, and unique trains designed by Jinma that load in a similar fashion to Vacoma's old flying coaster. Finally, in 2023, they would introduce arguably their most thrilling coaster yet, an LSM launch coaster featuring Jinma's B&M type track as well as new trains. This coaster launches at over 60 miles per hour and it's caused quite a stir when it opened, with many coaster enthusiasts in the West noting how good the ride looked. Not only was this a unique coaster for Jinma, but no other manufacturer offers a coaster quite like this, making it even more appealing. This also marked the first time in the enthusiast world that Western enthusiasts started to look at Jinma more seriously, with some even calling for their rides to be built in the West. Jinma Rides, for all their flaws, has overcome a lot to get to where they are now. They have a diverse collection of ride models that offer more than just a lower price to compel buyers to consider them but they still have had trouble selling to the Western world. Jinma has attempted to solve this problem by launching Noble Rides, a shell corporation based in Switzerland. Their role is to sell and engineer rides for the Western market, which Jinma then produces in China. But their goal is to help break the stigma around installing a Jinma Rides coaster in a Western park. Because in all honesty, Jinma does look to make some really good rides. They will build just about any ride they are asked to, and they're constantly looking for new ways to improve their existing rides or create new ones. They could be a real disruptor in the rides industry, but none of that matters if no one is willing to take the first step. Developments in the plans for a huge piece of land by Lake of the Ozarks. Tonight, people will get a look at the plans for a 10-story hotel and family amusement park. Oasis at Lakeport, an all-new family theme park coming to Missouri in 2025, bought one. They bought a Noble Rides launch coaster the same launch coaster that Jinma debuted in 2023. This coaster is coming to America. The first major Chinese coaster in America is coming in 2025. Like it or not, it is happening. The unmistakable Jinma Rides train has been on display at IAPA for the last two years. It's real and it's happening. There are also rumors that a super spinning coaster will also be coming to this park, though that's not officially confirmed yet. So with all this uncovered about Jinma Rides, will they ultimately be successful outside of China? In many ways, Jinma Rides have already changed the industry. In 2012, they were kicked out of IAPA for intellectual property theft asserted by Zamperla. They would return to IAPA the next year, and in 2023, Jinma Rides has continued to steal technology from other ride manufacturers. I personally observed them doing it at IAPA in 2023, but the response now is for manufacturers to tell them to go away. That is, if they're even noticed in the first place. B&M allowed these two guys from Jinma to get a very close-up view, taking photos and videos of the new Penguin Shark train. Two representatives from Jinma over here are strategically covering their badges that say Jinma rides under their jacket and tie. Manufacturers are now becoming almost content with this happening. In a way, it may even be a good thing, driving manufacturers to try new things and explore new ideas. We're entering a very strange time in the industry where nothing is private and all designs can and will be copied, and competition is heating up. It will be very interesting to see where all of these companies are in 10 years. With that discussed, tell me what your thoughts are on Jinma Rides coming to the US and Europe. Jinma Rides is a Chinese ride manufacturer that has recently become one of the largest ride manufacturers in the world. Most of their success has been inside mainland China and Southeast Asia, with very few sales occurring outside this region. Jinma had been attempting to break into the US and EU market for several years since at least 2012, with little success, even being kicked out of the Industry IAPA Expo in Orlando in 2012 for intellectual property theft. 
This lack of success stemmed from a poor understanding of these markets. The ride types and marketing that worked in Southeast Asia would not work for the West. Combined with other efforts, Jinma Rides launched the subsidiary Noble Rides in 2021. Based out of Switzerland, Noble Rides aims to present itself as a European ride manufacturer, much like B&M or Intamin, but with manufacturing done in China. They claim that their products have cost advantages that cannot be matched by contemporary ride manufacturers while not sacrificing quality or safety. Noble slash Jinma Rides have also established a close relationship with American ride manufacturer Wisdom Rides. They're known for their transportable rides. With this deal, Wisdom helps with support for Noble Rides in the US, and Jinma produces Wisdom Ride models for the Chinese market. With this basic overview complete, let's take a deeper look at the products offered by Noble Rides. Noble Rides is currently primarily focused on bringing Jinma's roller coasters and observation wheels to the US and Europe. When it comes to roller coasters, they have seen particular interest in their Super Spinning Coaster and LSM Launch Coaster. Both are different than what's really offered by existing manufacturers. In fact, most of the rides Noble advertises are more unique than most rides advertised by Jinma. In fact, only a few of Jinma's standard ride models are even advertised on their website, with most rides being unique ride model proposals that have yet to be built anywhere. This includes different types of family, thrill, high thrill, spinning, and portable coaster designs. Three models advertised that are familiar to those who know Jinma rides are the Tilting Coaster, Inverted Coaster, and Super Spinning Coaster. The Tilting Coaster is Jinma's take on the Tilt Coaster originally pioneered by Vacoma. This ride is not the same as the Vacoma version. It features the standard Jinma trains along with a variety of different track layouts as well as the option for customizable layouts. Noble also advertises the Suspended Coaster, this being Jinma's second generation suspended thrill coaster. It's also one of Jinma's most popular ride models in China, and a close competitor to Vacoma's suspended thrill coaster. Finally, they showcase Jinma's super spinning coaster, my personal pick for Jinma's best ride model. This spinning coaster was one of the first spinning coasters to feature an inversion. It's extremely popular in China, and I personally foresee it having one of the best chances for sale to the US or EU. An interview with Noble Rides and Wisdom Rides from IAPA 2023 shed light on the company's observation or Ferris wheel business, with them stating that they were close to closing contracts to build four to five observation wheels in the next two years. Noble's observation wheels are some of the most impressive on the market, coming in multiple different designs and scales as well as appealing to parks and non-amusement park destinations. Noble slash Wisdom also announced that they made deals with multiple parks for family coasters, larger coasters, and flat rides, all to be delivered in 2025. It remains to be seen where these rides will end up, but it's safe to say that one way or another, Chinese manufactured rides and roller coasters will be coming to the US and EU soon. Finally, let's review Noble's flat rides. Their primary focus, at least for their advertising, appears to be on tower rides. This includes rides that are basically the same as star flyers, observation towers, and drop towers all of which are the same as Jinma's offerings, and none seem to offer any competitive advantage other than cost compared to existing versions of the same rides. That being said, Noble is very vocal about building rides that work for their clients. This would be sure to include any ride that Jinma already makes, as well as custom rides requested by clients. The same is true for their roller coasters, and they make it abundantly clear that they are interested in creating custom roller coasters that work for each client's needs and wants. Noble also highlights their cooperation with various other aspects of the amusement industry, with the Noble team doing design and creative work with the clients, Jinma doing the manufacturing in China, and a selection of other established companies doing ride control systems and theming, with all of their designs complying with TUV and ASTM standards. In the next few years, we'll see the results of Jinma's expansion into the US and EU, with the first ride slated to open in 2025. Only time will tell if this venture will be successful long term or just a fad. What are your thoughts on Noble Rides? How would you feel if a park near you opened one of their rides? This Chinese knockoff ride manufacturer tried to hire me last year to help them sell rides in the US, but we'll get to that in a moment. Beijing Shibolai Amusement Equipment, or SBL for short, is a somewhat infamous Chinese ride manufacturer founded in 1989. They are known for making just about anything an amusement park can need. Many of their rides are also known for being considerably worse made than their competitors, even when compared to other Chinese ride manufacturers like Jinma Rides. 
The company has recently been trying to break into Western markets, but has had basically no interest from buyers. But we'll get to that part of their business in a moment. Let's look at the company's history to see how we got here. The company got its start producing small-scale rides and scenery pieces for China's growing theme park market in the 90s. They slowly increased the scale of their ride production with time and produced their first roller coaster in 1999. This was a small jungle mouse coaster, an extremely popular ride model in Asia. Over the next few years, they would grow their roller coaster segment by introducing loop and corkscrew style coasters and looping shuttle coasters. In this time, they also exported one of these coasters to Cuba, becoming the first Chinese roller coaster in North America. They made arguably their largest advancement as a company in 2005 by creating the first Chinese-made suspended looping coaster. This ride model would take the Chinese industry by storm, with nearly 100 being made by various Chinese ride manufacturers since 2005. That's more than double the number of original suspended looping coasters made by their original manufacturer, Vacoma. While Chinese manufacturers have made tons of suspended looping coasters, SBL has not been able to ride this wave. While they have sold 23 of these rides, their largest Chinese competitor, Jinma Rides, has sold 45. More interesting, the lower quality of SBL rides can be seen in these numbers. Jinma sold their first suspended coaster in 2007, just three years after SBL, yet only five have closed. Meanwhile, out of SBL's 23 suspended coasters, eight have already closed. This also speaks to the lower price of SBL's coasters compared to Jinma, as oftentimes prospective parks with poor financial backing will buy SBL rides and fail soon after opening or never finish construction at all. As time has gone on, SBL has started to create new and more modern ride designs, though these rides can still be described as knockoffs of existing rides. For example, in 2013, they introduced one of their most popular models, known as the Magic Roller Coaster. This is a ride based on the Mauer Skyloop Coaster. These rides have become so popular that they've passed the number of original Skyloops created, with 11 Mauer Skyloops being built and 12 SBL versions of the ride. The SBL version of the ride does feature some differences, with an overall lower capacity due to its slower lift, as well as different restraints using hard over-the-shoulder restraints, as well as multiple seatbelts compared to the Mauer version with a simple lap bar. SBL's next big ride came in 2016 with their version 2 suspended coaster. This improved the trains of the ride, including adding more streamlined restraints and sleek decorations. The ride's track layout was also improved being offered with an original track layout that was much smoother than previous offerings, while also being more thrilling. They made their next big roller coaster advancement in 2020 with the creation of their Dueling Dragons model. Inspired by an Intamin roller coaster built in China a few years prior, this ride is actually two roller coasters, one sit-down and one suspended coaster. Both ride types are different than SBL's previous designs. The ride is not an exact copy of the Intamin ride and features several unique elements. So far, SBL has built two of these rides. Both SBL Dueling Dragons coasters operate with just one train per track. This is common on cheaper roller coasters as it significantly reduces the cost of electrical controls and trains. This is a common trend for SBL and something I discovered when at IAPA. In fact, when I found SBL at IAPA, there was a lot of discoveries I made about them. At the Orlando IAPA Expo in 2023, I was surprised to see SBL at all. I had been the previous two years, and while some of their competitors such as Jinma Rides had some presence, this was the first year that SBL attended. This is significant, as if a company has a presence at the IAPA Expo in Orlando, they have some intention of selling their rides in the US. Knowing what I already did about SBL, I thought this strange as none of their rides really appeal to the Western market. When I went to their booth, I was not surprised to see that, other than the salesman, there was no one at the booth. I don't think this was just due to the time that me and my friend approached the booth either, as the salesmen were all over us, even though we were wearing badges that clearly said student. After explaining this, I asked a few questions and asked for a brochure that you're seeing on your screen now. We thanked them and started to walk away. As we were walking away, one of the salesmen ran up behind us and stopped us. We were caught off guard as he explained how they were not making any sales because they had a, and I quote, Asian face. He asked if we would be willing to help them sell rides because we had an, and I quote, white face. At this point, we were both a little shocked and so we let the curiosity get the best of us, and we agreed. 
The representative had us put his phone number in our phones, then asked us both to stay in touch. Baffled, we reached back out a little later, and I guess someone at SBL was against the idea of hiring two random kids off the IAPA show floor, as they now wanted me to send my resume. Out of morbid curiosity, I did send a modified version of my resume, but never received a response. Though this whole situation is comical, it really shows how unprepared SBL is for the US market. While they believe their largest problem is their Asian face, I believe their actual problem is their products. Let's start with their most basic product issue. It's not clear if SBL rides are ASTM compliant. Chinese competitor Jinma Rides makes it clear in their US advertising that their rides comply with TUV and ASTM requirements. Nowhere on SBL's advertising does it state anything about compliance with these standards. This means that their rides are already extremely limited in the number of states they could even operate in legally. Next is more subjective, but none of their rides are appealing to US parks. Their advertising does not help this. I'm sorry, but no American park is interested in a ride that looks like this, and the words full of happy are not helping to sell it. Their market in China has shifted to a more family-focused family coaster type segment in recent years, and their prices are very competitive. This large jet coaster style family coaster with just one train comes in around 1 million US dollars. This is extremely cheap, a similar but much higher quality coaster from B&M comes in at around 10 or 11 times this price. SBL offers very few rides that I would say appeal to a western market, but even the slightly appealing rides they do have, they don't really advertise. For example, the Dueling Dragon Coaster mentioned before. It's a cool ride idea, but the ride is not mentioned at all in their IAPA pamphlet and their website ad for the model features a screenshot clearly taken directly from No Limits 2. I'm sorry, but this isn't gonna sell to anyone in the US, except perhaps Kentucky Kingdom. The roller coaster pamphlet handed out at IAPA looks like this, and features no interesting rides to someone in the West, in my opinion. In the first page, they proudly display their first generation suspended coaster. Do they not realize that parks in the West stopped buying these coasters over 20 years ago? Absolutely no Western park is gonna be interested in a cheaper Chinese version, no matter the price. Moving on a little bit to their flat rides, they seem particularly proud of their giant swing model, which is just an objectively worse version of SNS's Scream and Swing. SBL's version features over-the-shoulder restraints and only comes in one side. The words wild and breathtaking are doing a lot of heavy lifting with this one. They also heavily promote their freefall ride, which I guess gives you a feeling of failing, which seems accurate. SBL seems to specialize in giving their drop towers big hats. Other than that, their ride model is fairly unremarkable compared to their competitors, even when compared to other Chinese manufacturers and their offerings. Throughout this video, you have been seeing sections from SBL's official sales book given out at IAPA in 2023. Compare what you've been seeing to their closest competitor Jinma Rides brochure. Not only is theirs much higher quality, SBL's is literally falling apart already, but Jinma offers some actually interesting attractions. For example, they offer and prominently advertise a modern LSM launch coaster, a tilt coaster, a modern launched spinning coaster with a switch track, a compact six inversion coaster designed in real design software, multiple tower rides, and some unique flat rides made by no other manufacturer. But don't just take my word for it, Jinma Rides' recent expansion into the West has been a objective success, with them reportedly closing several deals with Western parks at the 2023 IAPA Expo. SVL, on the other hand, had an empty booth and no sales. SBL right now kind of reminds me of Jinma back around 2010. At this time, Jinma tried to break into the Western market, but continued to offer the same products and promotions that worked in China. This backfired horribly and got them temporarily banned from IAPA for intellectual property theft. This left them essentially blacklisted from the Western rides market and gave them time to change their strategy. In 2021, they relaunched with a new name and a new European subsidiary as well as a new product line. SBL is currently in the process of learning this lesson the hard way, 
And while I hope they do learn and become a real competitor in the ride supplier industry, as competition is always a good thing, I feel they have a very long way to go before any serious buyer even stops by their IAPA booth, let alone buys a ride from them. I mean, look at what they covered their booth in. That's my thoughts on SBL. What do you think? Does this company ever have a chance at becoming a real player in the Western ride supplier market? Or are they forever doomed to be stuck in Southeast Asia? Let me know in the comments below. While Jinma and SBL may be the only two Chinese ride manufacturers trying to come to the West right now, they are not the only Chinese amusement park company attempting to do so. There's also a lot to talk about with Chinese manufacturers who only operate in China. Let me know if you want to see more videos on the Chinese ride industry